so I put out the video last week about um, someone who had said publicly, because it's a sheer online, about, like I said, there, there's, he asked rhetorically, is there a mile to go up too high when there's not a store base in Okay. And also, he asked rhetorically, does it be somewhere that it will bring the gula fair if someone goes there, the harbais? And those rhetorical questions have already been rebutted others. Because, yes, there, there, there's a few spoken, and specifically about going to Harabas, bring the Gula, that was the end of Sefer Devarayam and the beginning of Sefer Ezra, where what? The whole return to this, everybody to Zion and, and you know, resell land is also Cyrus's proclamation, <clears throat> and go build the town. And you can't build the town if you don't go there. But not only that, it's, uh, I'll just give you two psukim because people like these ones. Uva'u ha'dim, okay? Ba'ya ba'yom ahu. Itaka, right? Uva'u ha'ovadim, me'eretz ha'shur v'an yidachim, me'eretz ha'shayim. And what? Mishpahavu la'ashem bar ha'kodesh b'yerushalayim. That's even the song. And uh, Ari Goldwag and, uh, put out a new version. And uh, our good friend, Rabbi Yehuda Levi, the uh, Temple Mount activist is uh, so these two great men, uh, good singer, a new song, and they put an a cappella version for Sphira. And that's the words of uh, Ari Goldwag's song, Yishtachavu Lashem Bahar Kodesh Shalom. So it says that the, the in, these exiles will be gathered and they'll to Jerusalem to bow down to God, not to bring to Korbanos, but just bow down on his mountain. Right? That's a, that's a step one. When the Jews came back to uh to Jerusalem in early second temple times before they had built the second temple you could imagine that that's what they did Ratsu Avadeh Avaneha fell down on the ground kissed the right you come into Eric Stroll you fall down and kiss the ground you come to Shiloh we have to deal with here okay so and it says also that in days to come what happens that's the last verse in second verse in Isaiah. He said, Be on every Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh, they'll come down to bow to me. They'll come to bow down to me. Now, why has God mentioned that? Why every Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh? Why bow down? Why bow down? Because really, you're supposed to come and bring sacrifice when? On the holidays. If uh, everybody, even Goyim, were to go in front of God every single day, that'd be a little bit of a schlep, right? right. So, you know, Goyim have the right to show up on occasion, and Jews are supposed to show up on the three festivals. But here it says, every Shabbos and Rosh Hashanah, everybody's just going to come to what? Bow down to God. Why? Because there's a milo of going to the base of Mikdash just to bow down and worship. And as a matter of fact, that's what the Mahmudas would do. Their job was to worship. And uh, that's that seems to be a much more common act. Okay, supposed to go to God, bow down, and to pray at Harabais, and people forget that. So yes, there is this will bring the Ula faster. And uh, of course, there's the Dunning Kruger slash Nelson Muntz fallacy. What is uh guys know about fallacies? In which context? How does a fallacy work? A fallacy is you could say uh that's just an ad hominem argument. If you're in, if you're really trying to debate things and get down to the the truth of the matter. You could say that someone bring arguments for or against. Okay, is that tonight we just saw in the Mishnah? Let's just say we are arguing that that the ideas in the Mishnah, Nachuma Hamadi versus Chazal. Right? There, there are difference of opinion regarding those Nazir. An ad hominem argument would be, yeah, well, you know, uh, you are from Dai and not from Eretz so your argument should count. That's an ad hominem argument. We're not arguing the point, we're arguing the person, ad hominem. So that's a, it's a fallacy, let's say, when you need to argue logic, and instead you just bring up personal things. Muntz's fallacy is when someone says no one knows what that is. Nelson Muntz famously answered rhetorically to a question. That's like the square root of a million. No one will ever know. Okay, so like, yeah, no, he, he's the Amharitz. But people do know what that is. It's obvious. So that's, that's a, like someone says. Uh, psychologists call this the Dunning Kruger effect. It's okay, so we're back on. What's the Dunning Kruger effect? They found that people have no real expertise in something, they overestimate their own expertise, and that people who are really qualified uh, are more humble about it. Okay, so you have some people who are overconfident in what they do. I, I know this one guy, like two, two people, incredibly Dunning Kruger, they think they're geniuses. Okay, 
So that that's basically what it's connected to. So someone could say, unfortunately, I know I know it never said those forum meant such a thing. So that's unfortunate. Well, we've seen this. By the way, Moshe Rabbeinu then said also there's some people who make it all their their Yiddish kite. That's their Yiddish kite harabayas thing. You know who made it his whole Yiddish kite with harabayas? What do Rashi and Uncle say about Moshe Rabbeinu when he when he dove into Hashem? Say he dove into Hashem in, on behalf of Am Yisrael a few times, right? God was going to destroy them. What was his own personal prayer to God? Oh, that's, that's yeah, no, I just want to go across the Jordan. What's he referring to? The Mikdash. Rashi and Uncle point this out. I want to see the I want to see the good goodly mountain of the Lebanon. So Moshe Rabbeinu's only prayer was. Get to see the base of Mikdash. If David Elch and Moshe Rabbeinu made it their lives' pursuits, that's the one thing they asked of God to just be able to be in the base of Mikdash, not to offer a core, but not to build the base of Mikdash, just to see. Moshe Rabbeinu just wanted to see where they're going to build the base of Mikdash. And David Elch never got to see it either. His pursuit was just Ad em Tzamakom, find it, the base of Mikdash, which is what he eventually was able to do. That's their life pursuit. I wouldn't mind. That some Jews are really their their dedication in life is to find God's place and to go there. I think it's better than let's say even people dedicate themselves to finishing shas. By the way, not everybody gets to finish shas. It's not required. Like yeah, lo lo ben tell me man. Of course you have to finish shas, but you are required l'shechno tidrushu v'atashama. You will have to go there many times a year. You have to build a temple. Many of us will not complete studying Torah. So that's where it goes. So I was very surprised by this and uh, I feel very sorry about it. That uh, we have to convince people about it. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.